Hello, my name is Dr. Majd Izrab and I've been a practicing nephrologist for the past 15 years. It's been really disappointing that for the past few decades, uh, there have been no major changes and advances in the management of kidney disease short of diabetes control, blood pressure control, and lipid control, etc. So in the next series of videos, I'm going to be talking to you about an innovative and integrative medicine approach for the management of kidney disease that incorporate our genetic predisposition, environmental exposure, and lifestyle choices into the management of kidney disease. In the first video, I'm going to be talking to you really about the definition of kidney disease and the current classification. For a long time, actually, nephrologists did not agree what constitutes kidney disease. So in 2002, the National Kidney Foundation came up with a definition that defined kidney disease as any kidney damage lasting more than three months and the kidney damage is defined as either kidney function of less than 60 ml per minute or as i call it 60 percent or any persistent abnormal uh, urine or any persistent structural damage in the kidneys that is seen like on an ultrasound or cat scan for example so you can have normal kidney function but uh, persistent changes in the urine or uh, structurally and you can still have chronic kidney disease. We measure kidney function by measuring the level of waste product in the blood. And one of the most famous waste product that's used, commonly used, is called creatinine. Creatinine is actually uh, a waste product produced by our muscles and our kidney get rid of it. So the higher the level, the worse the kidney function. And from that, we can estimate kidney function. And the estimated uh, kidney function is called estimated GFR or glomerular filtration rate. Glomerular filtration rate is defined as the total amount of waste that is filtered by all the filtering units of the kidneys in one minute. From that, the, uh, there were many equations developed that incorporate creatinine, age, gender, and race into an equation to come up with an estimation of this uh, GFR. And the reason that they incorporate age, gender, and race is because our muscle mass depends on those factors. Uh, many of these uh, equation, and the most commonly used now is called CKD-EPI equation, actually are more accurate at advanced kidney disease than at a higher near normal kidney function. And they're also, they're not as accurate in elderly or in professional athletes, for example, who have big muscle mass or morbidly obese patients. Now, the National Kidney Foundation also classified kidney disease into five stages. Stage one is where you have normal kidney function or kidney function of more than 90%. And stage five is when you have kidney function of less than 15%. And this is where people may require dialysis. And our goal here is to come up with innovative approach to prevent the progression of kidney disease toward the need of dialysis, period. That's really our whole goal. Now in 2012, the National Kidney Foundation in collaboration with other international societies, they came up with um, an update on their classification and they uh, split stage three into stage three A when the kidney function is above 45 and stage three B when the kidney function is below 45. And they also added protein in the urine into the classification. And the whole point of this is to really uh, identify which patients are more likely to progress to kidney failure than others. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, in the next few videos I'm going to be talking to you about more comprehensive and innovative approach about the management of kidney disease. For more information please visit us at www.inkidney.com.